Hello, welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Councilmember Rick Eumann. Today we're talking about new and planned developments in Chandler's major employment areas. We have lots of stuff going on throughout our city and people will always come up to me and go like, well, what's gonna go on that lot and what's going on that building? So we're gonna kind of go through the whole city today and let people kind of know what's uh, what's happening in our town and stuff. So welcome my guests, uh, Mike Miranda, Economic Development Director, and Kim Moyers, our Downtown Redevelopment Manager for the City of Chandler. So welcome to uh, Chandler Focus. So uh, let's begin by sharing your background with our viewers. Ladies first, Kim. Sure. I came from Kokomo, Indiana, where I did uh, downtown and economic development for over 10 years. I uh, came to Arizona right at a decade ago and was in Queen Creek for about six and a half years before I came here a year and a half now. So been in economic development and downtown redevelopment for quite a few years. Cool, yeah, cool. And, and Mike? I'm an East Valley boy. I grew up in Mesa. Um, I've been working in economic development for about 15 years and with the uh, city of Chandler for about 11 months now. I'm very happy You're to be here. Two, two newbies here yeah. and stuff, yeah. so but it's great. Well, welcome and stuff. So let, let's talk about our our, micro, our major employment areas and, and can you kind of define what those are? Yeah, we have uh, five major employment centers throughout the city. Um, within those employment centers, about 75% of all the city's employment takes place there. And they're broken up into West Chandler, North Chandler, downtown, Price Corridor, and the Air Park area. So substantial amount of land has been preserved for employment within the community for job purposes. Right. And everybody always talks about the Price Road Corridor, but some of these other corridors create have thousands of jobs in them. And Correct. One thing Chandler's done is a really good job of trying to, to keep that and stuff. So um, to give our viewers a bird's eye view of what's happening in Chandler, okay. let, let's, start with, let's start with North Chandler and, and then we'll make our way across, okay. across the city, so, so to speak. So. Um, let, let's talk about North Chandler. It, it's, it's a diverse mix of employment. Talk about some of the businesses in the area. Um, there's a new Avia Grace development going on and some of the other stuff. So Yeah, so North Chandler is um, probably Chandler's oldest employment center. It was uh, situated and is situated along uh, Old State Route 87, which is Arizona Avenue. And the businesses that make up this employment corridor are typically um, locally owned, they own the real estate that their building's on, and they have a long-term commitment to the area. It's a um, really just, it's a small area, uh, but it makes up about 10 to 12% of our total employment base within the community, but constitutes about 17% of our industrial flex space, which is really important for us. Um, so it's, it's a very stable area. It's doing well. One of the things that we're looking at now is how do we maintain and enhance its long-term viability. So um, there's a number of programs that uh, mayor and city council have put into place. One of them has been the infill incentive plan, which um, allows for the redevelopment and repurposing of older retail into something new. Uh, and we've had a, a recent success, you, you alluded to it earlier, is the uh, Avila project. Um, that program, that project took advantage of the infill incentive program. So we partnered with them to demolish approximately 66,000 square feet of old retail space at the East Valley Mall. The old Target, the old Target Center. Yep, yep, just on the, the <laughs> west side there, uh, on the northwest corner. And uh, we're gonna have uh, 194 new housing units going in there, and it's gonna add a lot of economic vitality to that area, bring in some new bodies to support the existing retail. So the program is working as intended, and we're really actively marketing this infill incentive program as uh, the city approaches build out you know, we need to start investing more in our internal core, and that's what we're doing, and it's paying dividends. And, and that also has a rail corridor, correct? Yep. And how, I mean, how important is that to have for some of those businesses? There, there are a few businesses that take advantage of the, the rail uh, going in that uh going north and south, just uh, east of Arizona Avenue. Um, the volume isn't huge, so you, you know, there's not a lot of uh, train traffic. However, there's a small amount of business that take advantage of it. And you said the word light industrial. Mm -hmm. People hear industrial, and yeah. thinking like steel plants and things Smoke like stacks. that. Smokestacks. Smokestacks yeah. and stuff like that. So talk about what light industrial means so people have an understanding and maybe a few of the companies that are up there. Yeah, so light industrial really can be anything from um, warehousing to uh, assembling components. It doesn't necessarily have um, um, environmental impacts. It doesn't pollute. They're just It's just a zoning classification, if you will. And they're nondescript buildings, and you may not even notice what's going on in there. And some of the, the companies that are, are really notable um, up in that area um, are on the, the aerospace aviation side. They do a lot of um, uh, specialized equipment refurbishing. Um, there's quite a bit of um, customized um, 
manufacturing of manufacturing devices. So they'll design the machines that make something uh, on, uh, on spec. And then we also have a, a growing uh, entrepreneurial um, software cluster in that area as well. So that's kind of the environment we're working in. There's a lot of really unique companies up in there. And it is really cool because people don't realize, and I do a lot of economic development trips to different businesses and some of these cool businesses that we have, and yeah. they're tucked away. And I think up in North Channel, we have a company that makes, um, I think it's Hava Oil or whatever for cos one of the biggest, cosme for the cosmetic mm -hmm. industry. And it's like tucked in this little building, you'd never know it. And they're yep. one of the largest producers of that. So it's, it, it is pretty cool to see that happen. It's a, you know, the, the number I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, 70% of all jobs are created from companies growing in your own city. Correct, yeah. So Because we always talk about the new ones, it's great. We always like the new companies coming in and things like that, but it's so important that as a city, and I think we've done a really good job, councils over the years, of making sure those companies feel at home, Yeah. you know, and trying to add more amenities and stuff. So let's go out to West Chandler, okay. uh, home to large manufacturing facilities, complemented by smaller mixed-use developments, and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, West Chandler is a really strong area within our city. It's uh, anchored by uh, the Intel plant on West Chandler Boulevard. Right. Um, however, there's a lot of support services that go into other industries. And some of the, the real unique projects we're seeing right now, one of them is called Kyrene 202. It's being developed by East Group. And um, they have two new buildings up now, which home um, court furniture and Stone Creek furniture. And this is building product that we've had a deficiency in. So East Group's come in, they put... Uh, those two buildings into place, and they've been so successful. They're building three new buildings of approximately 165,000 square feet. So having that spec building on on um, on hand is very important to us. Um, we've also had a number of uh, Chandler-based expansions. Um, Avair is an air aircraft parts uh, distributor and refurbisher. That's a um, cool place. I've yeah, very yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're an international company. They currently operate in 60 countries, and they've just made a, a major expansion into Chandler. Rinkem has also built a new building, 80,000 square foot uh, building, which supports some of our manufacturing um, industries in Chandler as well. Um, Orga Miao, uh, locally grown company, mm -hmm. you know, it's that, that small business we like to see scale, is, is doing very well in West Chandler. They're adding employees, adding space, and they're actually... Um, increasing their market share. So they're going into Canada and Mexico now as well. And uh, earlier you touched upon growing our own. Um, in West Chandler, we have the Innovations Incubator. Right. Uh, City-sponsored incubator to help the growth of small business. Um, uh, the incubator is doing very well. We have a 17 tenants now and we're 90% occupied. And um, we've recently put in some programs to help scale those businesses with some support services as well. So West Chandler, it's a very stable area. When you have access to the 101, 10 and 202, provides for great transportation linkages. And there's a new project going in just north of Ray Road that's kind of a fun mixed use. There's housing, there's condos, mm -hmm. there's townhomes. Yep. Just do you want to touch on that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, I, I believe you're referencing the Rhythm Project. Right. right. Um, and that's going to add additional housing stock to that area. Right. Um, it's on approximately 30 acres, I believe. And it's... Um, it's going to be really nice to get some bodies and some vibrancy in there to help support some of that uh, retail over at Casa Paloma and that general vicinity. So, and, and Casa Paloma is one of the neat shopping centers. It's been around oh, now it's beautiful. for about 15 years. Absolutely and beautiful. It really has some great mix of restaurants and things like that. And that's, it's kind of a restaurant row for us in terms mm -hmm. of that West Chandler area and stuff. But, it is. Um, also in West Chandler, we have the Chandler Corporate Center, mm -hmm. which is close and dear to my heart because it's right next to my neighborhood. But Talk a little bit about that, Rockefeller. We just we have a new company coming in there yep. um, with an eighty thousand spec building. Rockefeller believes in, in getting things out of the ground. You want to talk a little bit about that company and who else is in that center? Yeah, that's a fantastic center. It's located at the northwest corner of McClintock and Chandler Boulevard. Um, the recent announcement we've worked with up there is called Devita, and they are a specialty pharmaceutical company, and they're going to have uh, approximately six hundred employees. Um, in about 75,000 square feet of space. So we're really excited to welcome them right. to uh, uh, Chandler. And what's really unique about that project is it was a, that building, uh, Chandler Corporate Center 3 was built on spec. Right. It was filled and that's given the, the Rockefeller organization confidence in Chandler to go forward and build another 82,000 square foot spec building. So um, that area is doing very well. We have the Garmin 
research facility located in that same development and some really unique software companies that operate in there as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of activity that hard corner, the convenience store is being redeveloped. And so we're seeing a lot of new investment in that area because of the jobs. Yep. And that, that's where I cut my teeth in politics and that I'm glad we stopped what was going to go in there, which were big warehouses. And we've got people like Garmin and David and things like that going into that, that center. Now it's, it's pretty amazing. So, um, you talk about around the mall. We're still in West Channel a little bit mm -hmm. and before we get down to the Price Road Quarter, but talk about the mall area. You know, there's lots of stuff going on there. Yeah, the really exciting. Elevation Channel. People are going to forget that thing was there for probably 10 years, the, the wonderful skeleton building. Probably the number one question we always got asked about. But yep. Talk around, around the mall. I mean, the mall itself is probably one of our biggest economic development drivers. Yes. And we talk about Shop Chandler, and I do articles about it and do shows about it, but talk about the mall and the importance the mall is to the city? Well, the, the importance of the mall can't be understated. Um, as a municipal city, we're relying on sales tax. And having a major anchor mall such as uh, Chandler Fashion Center really helps drive you know, our, our, the community's retail collections. But the businesses that set up shop there have done phenomenal. We've had some new tenants come into the mall. Uh, Mace Rich is a great partner of ours. Soft Surroundings had a, uh, their grand opening a couple months back. And so tenancies- You've got a relative works there, right? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, we won't go into that story. And the tenants are happy. We have Class A tenants. They're signing um, strong leases and occupancy is high. Um, Mace Rich continues to invest into the mall proper. They added the new splash pad, which is a nice amenity for families to come spend some time uh, and get out of the heat in the, in the summer months. And um, they've, they're also investing in uh, customer experience and safety. So maintaining safety is one of their main priorities and Chandler PD and their security staff work very well together to ensure their patrons are, are well taken care of. Let's talk about the el what's going on over by the old Elevation Chandler okay. site next to Costco. The, the number one question. It's starting to come out of the ground. People are like, what's going on now? So Yes, yeah, so uh, old Elevation Chandler came down about a year ago. Um, Heinz development firm has purchased the site and began renovating it. Um, they have uh, some really unique plans for the site. They're gonna add uh, the Broadstone, which is a mixed juice uh, uh, multifamily complex on the south side. And then the really exciting- it's like a four story. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. it's gonna be very dense right. um, multifamily. And then there's uh, about 250,000 square feet of class A office planned for that site. Um, some retail pads and a new Cambria Suites, which will be the first flag of theirs in Arizona. Um, in addition to that, there's gonna be structured parking to accommodate the density that that site's providing. So um, leasing activity is very strong. Heinz is bullish on the site. And so uh, we anticipate having some, some significant announcements here in the, the near future. And then on the, the west side of the mall is the Met, which is a, uh, another resort style living uh, apartment complex. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have approximately 335 units. And this is really a unique opportunity for Chandler because it keeps adding that density um, as we build out that we're looking to go vertical on. So uh, quite a lot of uh, activity in the mall area and it's, you know, it goes into feeding our retail um, businesses as well. So we're, we're adding the, the vibrancy to support our existing retail businesses. And, and we always get questions from council. You're building too many apartments. The Metropolitan, I was there for the opening. I think the rents are from like 800 to probably well over $2,000 a month. The, uh, the Heinz project will be similar to that. So it's the millennium generation who really doesn't want to own. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to shut the door and go, but right by the mall, all these restaurants that we have along that area and stuff. So it's, it's cool. Moving down to the Price Road Corridor, yes. um, you know, our, our crown jewel that we've been able to protect for all these years and stuff. And, and talk about all the Price Road Corridor. Price Road Corridor, I, I think you said it accurately, it's a jewel. I mean, the city has done such a phenomenal job of protecting it for employment purposes that it's it's really developed well. And we've had some great announcements recently and um, some partners, Wells Fargo, they're up to 800,000 square feet. They just brought two buildings online. Um, Maybe what, 12, when they finish the campus, it's gonna be like 12,000 yeah, employees we'll in our city. Yeah, we'll be about 12,000 employees right. on that campus and 1.8 million square feet of space. So it's a pretty substantial development. Um, and they, the, the Wells Fargo development team has been great to work with throughout this process. So, and they're gold lead certified. I think those buildings yeah, are yeah, gold. Leads. Yeah, so that's really cool. Yeah, and, and they're providing their employees um, with the flexible workspaces that they're needing. So mm -hmm. they're able to get the talent they need to fulfill their corporate mission. Um, Home to Win Suites just across the street from Wells Fargo is going vertical with construction. Right. It'll be the first Home to Win Suites in uh, Arizona. 
and it, you know, that's being supported by the employment growth in there as well. So there's quite a bit of activity along Price Road. I'm, and I know I'm going to miss a few. So um, as we move north, we've got uh, our Red Park Place has had um, a significant amount of su success. They're on 160 acres, home to corporate tenants such as Infusionsoft and Healthways. Uh, Mark IV, which is where the GM Innovation Center is located. Um, we're working with them right now on another 150,000 square foot Class A office building. Um, CVS, which is just north of the 202, recently announced an 800 person uh, pro project coming to town, which will occupy approximately 120,000 square feet. So Price Road Corridor, um, very desirable location. And we continue to uh, have a lot of success in attracting corporate tenants to that area. Yeah, it's anchored by a small little company to the south there in terms of Intel. Oh yeah, that 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 company. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, one of our great partners within the community. Right. They have uh, they they have about twelve thousand employees in the community that that are split between both campuses. So you have uh, Intel Ocotillo on the south, and then on the west side of town in uh, the West Chandler Employment right. Center. And they are a great corporate partner. Oh, New absolutely. Yeah. And at Chandler and Rural, they built state-of-the-art research and development facility and um, you know all these different places we're talking about a lot of jobs and, and you look at other cities around the valley that are building a lot of housing stock and that's great for them but you know people are going to live and work in Chandler yeah. um, which, which is really important to us yeah, and stuff so right. let, let's go to the, the the other crown jewel well, many of our crown jewels is the downtown area yes. um, we've got an amazing downtown that you know going back into the 90s was kind of boarded up a little bit and run down and um, the revivancy, the re revitalization of the whole area now and what's going on. And, you know, Kim, start talk about some of the things that are happening in downtown. Yeah, we are so excited that as we Like I said, get comfortable because this is going to take a while. Yeah, there's a lot of going on, so. a lot going on. I really look at downtown and, and see how it's transforming into more of an urban environment. And part of that urban environment is truly creating the place to live, work and play. And we've been so lucky. Just a couple of weeks ago, we got to go to Ulta Steel Yard Lofts, uh, which is 301 high density residential units. The first zero setback uh, along Fry and Washington Street. Um, you walk in and you're just, you're in an amazing facility that blends the old and the new. You see some of the actual steel that was left over from the steel yard uh, when they demolished that. Um, we, they have a, a fitness center that rivals any in town. You've got a chance right, to take they, a look at it. It's an amazing facility. Not only is there every piece of equipment that you can imagine, but it also has its own yoga room and its own spin room as wow. well. Um, and when they have a humongous area, a uh, gathering area that has a full kitchen in there that would see at least 20 people around the table. And then they have nine TVs that are all combined so that you can watch all nine NFL games at one time or you can watch one huge screen, which is really nice for that sense of belonging. So when ASU is on, they have one big screen. Yes. U of A is on, they just have it in the corner. Just a little corner. <laughs> okay. I had to get one shot in. So. Yes. Yes. And then they have a great gathering area outside with the pool, the cabanas, the fire pits, really encouraging uh, the tenants to come out and get to know each other. One of the things I thought was particularly cool about it is if you're in the water, there are speakers that you can still listen to the music underwater. So kind of neat. So that's doing very well. Last uh, week, they had double digit um, signings. Uh, so they're progressing very well. They have 128 units open right now. They look to have another 100 or so open in the next three to four weeks, and then the, the rest of them in March of 2016. It's a cool facility. The architecture is amazing, you know, for downtown, and, you know, uh, it's just another step in terms of revitalization for downtown. So it is. let's talk about the, you know, one of the big announcements we made and, and, and council passed a couple weeks ago was the... Um, uh, the new movie theater, so yes, to speak. Yes, The Row. The Row. Yes, Vintage Partners um, is looking to develop approximately 60,000 square feet uh, on the hard corner of Chandler Boulevard and Arizona Avenue uh, on the uh, southwest side. And this will be a two-story building. It'll have six movie theaters on the top floor, uh, about 100 seats per theater. They'll be all leather seats with an opportunity. It'll be a draft house. Um, it'll have the opportunity to have beer, wine with your, and some uh, some food with your movie. 
Um, and then when you go downstairs, there'll be another five to six um, restaurants that'll be down there, um, all of them with patio so that you can sit outside, which is so nice in Arizona. And then it'll have about 5,000 square feet of a gathering area on the hard corner of Arizona Avenue in Buffalo, more of that gathering area to go and sit when you're waiting for a movie, waiting for a table, that type of thing. Um, and then just to the west of that will be another 5,000 square foot uh, building uh, restaurant. So they uh, are looking to um, put their submittal in this next week for their PAD PDP. Um, they hope to start breaking ground with uh, by the summer and hope to be open by March of 2017. So they have a very aggressive schedule and the city is very excited to work with them to, to help them meet that schedule. It is, it's really an exciting project because of people asking for something to do after they eat and stuff at night. Um, talk about, um, I know there's a new restaurant opening up next to Vintage. Talk about the ostrich. Talk about some of those things. Just We've had some great new restaurants that have opened up. You know, we had Crust that opened up just a few months ago. Um, it's a pizzeria. Mike Marandino owns that. And he wanted to do something kind of neat and different. So the folklore is that there was an old speakeasy right underneath the San Marcos. And uh, rather it's true or not true, it lend itself to our first underground um, bar area. So the Ostrich is only open Wednesday through Saturday nights, starting at 7 p.m. You go down the stairs on Commonwealth into this beautiful uh, facility. All of the round tufted leather benches were actually from Monty's, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Wow. The lighting, the music, the atmosphere, it's doing very well. So great place to uh, go after dinner. In addition to that, we have a couple others that are starting. Um, uh, the Vintage 95, just to the building to the east of that is 85 West Boston, which is gonna be called the Brickyard. And this is Gavin Jacobs. Uh, this will be a kind of a tapas and uh, uh, mixology drinks that'll be open more in the afternoon evenings as well. Gavin hopes to open that up in December of this year. Just down the west, a little bit further, right by Burst of Butterflies, is going to be called a place called Sammy's, and it's going to be homemade ice cream, homemade cookies smashed together to a Sammy. So for all the for a family activity uh, after dinner, it's a great place to go. And then we also have the old Covo building, which we now call 55 Chicago. It's on Chicago, just north of the Perch. And this is going to be another um, restaurant slash bar entertainment with music. Um, there, it'll have another mixology element to it and they're hoping to be open by February of 2015. So we have several that are opening. Um, the old Deshaka place, uh, we're looking to um, rehab that into another restaurant. It's yet to be determined what that's going to be, but look for that in 2015 as well. So lots, I mean, that old, that moving south now, the, the perch and all that stuff going down there, the Alta Steel Yards you're starting to see, and our public's gonna to start to see more private development moving south along, you know, south of Fry will start happening. And so there's a lot of good things going on. I mean, it's it's an exciting time in downtown and uh, people who waited too long to try and get land down there now are probably kicking themselves. And yeah. we'll have a bunch of other announcements, what we call Site 6 right behind the, um, uh, where CHOP is and things like that. That is gonna to come to council here in the next couple of months yes. to get that developed. and. So it's lots of good things happening in downtown. So we've got the employment side, we're not done yet. And, and then the downtown, the entertainment, some of our new single family that's going, you know, that's gone up, some amazing new multifamily. We've got some condos, we didn't even touch on, there's some new condos being mm -hmm. built just south of downtown Ocotillo, yeah. which is at Queen Creek and, and uh, Price. And there's a new wine storage place going in that's yeah. really cool, another wine bar there. So that's the first condo project in Chandler going in. Correct south of there so there's a nice little mix of, of, of stuff so let's go out towards the airport which is a pretty big part of our city in terms of you know um, in East Chandler and the, the employment area there that um, and the jobs that's around that area the air park area is on fire right now there's a, a ton of development interest in it um, a couple of them you know Mach 1 being developed by Trammel Crow it's just south of the 202 they've got a uh, uh, two buildings up, totaling about 210,000 square feet, and 
the really unique thing about this building is it's built for the millennium workforce. So what are they, what are they looking for in places to, you know, spend their days working for a company? So they've really thought about that as they build out the architecture. Um, Tiburon, uh, the southeast corner of Cooper and Germain, uh, there's going to be three new flex uh, light industrial buildings there. And then just across the street, uh, Metro Development is building 212,000 square feet of uh, flex industrial space. And um, people continue to ask me, why so much space? I mean, doesn't, doesn't that you know, have a, a, a concern for you? And I, not really. 88% of all our business development leads require existing space. Where it, you, it is crazy. You think that people want to take 18 months and, work yeah. and it's like, okay, we're moving and we want to be there tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, they, they have a two period, two quarter um, time horizon to get into a new space. And so we're unique in the sense that we need to, our development community is staying ahead of the game right. to develop that product so we can bring those jobs in. So uh, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, Ergens is developing approximately 400,000 square feet of space uh, just north of the air park. Uh, the first building's under construction now, which will be 82,000 square feet. And then the really unique thing about these buildings is they're being built with opportunity to put mezzanines in so that 82,000 mm -hmm. square foot building could really be 160,000 square foot building. So a lot of flexibility is being built into it. So um, the area is doing really well. FedEx is opening up their new distribution center. Um, it does not use air cargo at the mm. airport. It's uh, And it's going to employ 200 people out in that area. So we're seeing a lot of activity. And then just north, um, Porsche is under construction, mm. which uh, will be another nice amenity for our uh, retailers at the Chandler 202 Auto Park. How many, million, how many square feet approximately oh. in the city of Chandler is either out of the ground or about to come out of the ground? Uh, you have any idea? I think coming out of the ground, we're just under a million and a little over one million square feet and planned to come out of the ground. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty significant. So How many jobs? In, con oh, go ahead. in construction or coming out of the ground right now is yeah, just about two million square feet. How many jobs are in Chandler? Uh, approximately 100,000. So we have a, a population base of 245,000 and 100,000 jobs, which, and, and they're high, we have a lot of high quality jobs in our Absolutely, city, yeah. which is one of the big things when, when you look to strive, we have a great school district mm -hmm. in Chandler and Kyrene School District and Tempe Union High that are in our city and Mesa School District. So we, you know, education gets bashed a lot, but we do have some really quality companies coming here because of the education and the opportunities here in, in Chandler and stuff. So any other things that are going on that we missed or, I mean, there's, we could probably go on with a bunch we missed, but. I'm sure I missed quite a bit. Right. Um, I think, you know, just the the big story here, tying it all together from an economic development perspective and Cam, jump on in is, um, you touched upon the education. Uh, we have a great school district or great school districts and great charter school options, which um, really reassures the companies we're looking to expand in Chandler or recruit to Chandler right. that their employees' children can get the best education possible. And it's a major selling point for us. Uh, another selling point for us that shows just how fiscally responsible and stable our community is, is our AAA bond ratings. Mm -hmm. uh, we're one of uh, maybe uh, two dozen or so cities, towns, villages across the country that have a AAA bond rating. And you know, a lot of these spec developments require external financing to get done. And so when they're looking at investing tens of millions of dollars in these projects, they want to understand the, the city's fiscal underpinnings. And when they look at our bond rating and how we're positioned for the future, they see us as a very stable location for their investment. So it makes a difference. I don't mean to cut you off. We're like about out of time. They're circling like, hey, you got to get done. <laughs> um, I really want to thank you guys. I, I just want to let the public know. I mean, Chandler is really a very well-run city. It has great economic base, education, the entertainment, the, the mixed-use, different projects that are out there. Um, so when your friends are coming down here for the winter to visit and stuff, I mean, Chandler is what it's all about. And uh, great values on homes and great jobs, opportunities, and things like that. So I want to thank you guys for coming out today. And this is Chandler in Focus, Council Member Rick Kim, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.